All right, everyone. Just want to do a little follow up on the Wii, Wii Pro pH controller. I think that's how you pronounce it. Anyway, it, uh, it's been doing the job as well. Uh, it's been keeping my calcium reactor that I have in a closet that's just behind this wall here. And I run, up, run two little R lines through the wall. Here. But uh, it's been keeping it within 0 0.05, plus or minus. And uh, that's. I'm happy with it so far. It doesn't have to switch very often. Once you get your bubble count tuned in, it's it's pretty accurate. I don't have long-term concerns with that relay, I don't think, so I'm not gonna bother taking it apart and switching it off out for something solid state. Um, I'm not sure, I kind of changed a couple things at once, which I probably shouldn't have, because now I don't know for sure what caused it, but I recently got this Z light on the tank, actually around the same time that I installed that uh, calcium reactor on my tank, but around the same time, I've had some coral in my tank that I thought were dead, like I thought they were long gone. And it's hard to see sometimes, but there's actually new growth on them, and like two of my monsters that both had bit the dust have... Well, my blue, my red monkey that's down here has almost completely re-encrusted, re -encrusted, and the green one that I have up here has, grow, has a piece on it, I don't know, probably half an inch square that has started to regrow on it. So overall, I'm happy with the pH controller and the decision, so I'm not, nothing to complain about there. I, uh, just a couple of things that I have changed recently. Um, I was having a little bit of an LJ problem after the calcium reactor, and I'm not entirely sure why, but I had flow restrictors that I 3D printed installed on my uh, Jabo R20. They're, they're the biggest powerhead they sell, and I think I, I thought it was just too much flow, so I printed these flow restrictors to reduce the amount of flow it would have at the lowest rate. Um, I took them off, and almost all the, all the algae that was growing on my, well, I thought, thought was growing on my rock, I guess it was dead, because uh, all, my tank was just a storm for, like, a few hours, and it clogged my filter, uh, and almost all of it just blew right off the rock, which is peculiar, because when I would go in there and try pulling it off, it wouldn't come off easily. Yeah, settle down. Okay. Um, I am working on a few other things to increase stability of the tank, though. Um, so I'm actually going to take you downstairs to something I bought a few days ago. Um, tell you about the next project I'm working on. So a few days ago, I bought these. Well, I ordered them a few weeks ago, but these uh, food grade, uh, hundred and. 35 US gallon tanks. I got them in town for like 210 Canadian dollars, so what's that? 170 US and dirt cheese. Built a stand for it, did all the math. It should have a fake safety factor of about six, be with maximum flexing of like two millimeters or something in the center of the board I have underneath it. But uh, that's assuming even low distribution. Anyway, I fully loaded them. It didn't flex at all. So I'm fairly confident in that, but <clears throat> I need to finish some electrical along that wall with a GFI breaker up there. So I'm going to have this set up with my own controller with RO lines coming from a pump, a few lines going upstairs through my cold air return. I'm going to insulate the outside of it with probably another rubber hose, like like this guy, run a bunch of wires up through there and then I can have automated water change, auto top off from down here and it'll be completely redundant, but I'll get to that in a minute. So a uh, friend of mine slash client gave me this massive industrial peristaltic pump. Uh, because he's apparently bought a bunch of them and uh, hasn't had a use for them. So, I, it was kind of dirty. I had to clean it up. It wasn't very pleasant. A lot of acetone because it was used, I think, for pumping urethane resin. 
at some point, as well as paint and a whole bunch of other stuff. But thankfully, because it's a peristaltic pump, I can just replace that hose and <clears throat> no contact, so it's perfectly fine. So this is my driver circuit that I've been working on. There's still a couple little changes I want to make. I want to add a little bit. I want to add one more layer of redundancy to it, but we'll get to that in a minute. So this is basically the kind of piping I intend on doing. Blue is valves. Red is one-way valves with the indicated direction, and orange are flow sensors. So this I have one. I have three going to the tank. And then one coming from a saltwater reservoir, one coming from my RO reservoir, and one going directly to the drain. This should allow minimal mixing of water. I, I realize I could have one single line going to the tank, but I want to minimize the amount of mixing of water and the and that kind of thing with that. So I don't know. I don't know. I, I'm more worried about when I switch from doing an auto top off to... I mean, switch from doing a water change to a top off. I'm still going to have like a long line of RO running from my basement all the way up to the tank where there's still going to be salt water in there. So I'm going to be topping off with salt water for a long period of time. I'm not sure whether or not in the end it works out to being the same. But I, I don't know. Please let me know in the comments if you think it's really necessary because running three lines is going to be a lot more difficult. Just just annoying more than anything. Anyway, so this, with these valves, solenoid valves basically, will allow me to switch between any pair of lines so I can have source and destination selecting capability, right? So I'm using a AT Mega 2560, which is a micro I use a lot for work. Um, fairly... Very versatile Michael has a lot of memory for at least for small scale projects. So I designed this all in KI CAD. I don't know how many of you are going to be very interested in this side of things, but uh, essentially each of these blocks here named like uh, these are solenoid drivers. So essentially I just double click on here and I just end up with a MOSFET DAO going across the solenoid. I have outputs, inputs, right? All the protection circuitry is right there but that I can just copy and paste them, right? I don't have to keep my, have my sheet all messy by that. Um, but what I intend on doing, I have a bunch of these uh, float sensors as well that I'm gonna have in the tank. So you can, we can see that here. So I have my, I have an ultrasonic sensor in the sump. I have three float sensors in my sump, uh, low, medium, and high so that I can use that for both verifying my level sensor is behaving properly. And I'm gonna use, I'm gonna take these high and low signals and basically put uh, XOR, I can't remember. I, it's a logic gate on the inputs of each of these solenoid signals so that if the high or low limit switches are ever actually activated they won't be able to pump any water to the tank and it'll send me an alarm i'll i'll talk about that in a minute i also have two overflows in my in my tank so i have two float valve float switches in each of those so that if either i get too high uh it uh it'll be able to send an alarm because that means some of my plumbing is plugged just i'm sure it has never happened but i would just like to be safe um so i'm using two servos i'm actually going to be operating the pump at a constant flow rate and just switching these two switches would allow which will allow me to turn it on on and off essentially i'm gonna be hooking this thing up to wi-fi so i have a esp uh 8266-12f so it's just basic circuitry to get it working so i can program some basic functionality into it watch doctor. i'm going to be setting it up so that if it doesn't receive any communication from micro or anything a certain period of time it will also be able to reset the entire system um that kind of thing but i'm hoping that i'll be able to have this circuit finished within the next few days few days to a week and have it ordered um what else here 
Oh, I have ultrasonic level sensors set up for both of my reservoirs as well. So I'll be able to send myself an email or whatever when either tank starts to get low. So I'm still going to be checking on it a lot of the time. But I did the math on this, and based on my tank, I get about 5 to 7 gallons of evaporation per week. So at 100, 530 gallons, if I assume on the low end, that gives me 26 weeks of water for auto top off realistically i'm probably closer to four gallons per week so they're 135 um so I have four gallons so that puts me like way past 30 weeks of auto top off alone and if i'm changing five gallons a week in water changes that still gives me 27 weeks so yeah should be should be good just for nice stability and i can always bump up to water changes then i can bump up to like 30 gallons a week doing or seven gallons a week one gallon a day or two gallons a day i don't care but i'm not one i i don't want to drop any more buckets i dropped a bucket i don't i realize that this does give me possibility of having way more damage but we'll see how that goes um so that's kind of what my plan is um if it works well, I'm probably going to, I don't know if I'll open source it because there are, is going to be some, I don't know, I'll see. I might end up open sourcing the entire project, including all my source code for it. But uh, I might end up just selling the boards um, with the required hardware so someone can set up their own if they want to. Um I haven't, I personally haven't seen, I haven't looked very hard, but I haven't seen any systems that use one pump to do all, well, two functions, I guess, three, water in, water out, and then RO in for all top off, right? Um, I haven't seen any of them, so let me know if you have any interest in it. I, uh, I'll be working on it. Thanks for watching. If you have any suggestions for what I should, uh, change about this let me know in the comments below